Our next part is topic one of this conference. It's uh, sponsored by Cold Quanta, and it's going to be about uh, a number of things related to uh, quantum computing. Uh, Paul uh, Lipman is coming on as a keynote speaker. He's president of quantum information platforms at Quant Cold Quanta. Um, and he's led several cybersecurity businesses to exit as a CEO in the past, and uh, maybe he's going to do the same for Growth Quanta, but he's probably not going to talk about that. He combines, which is, I see a lot in this area, uh, physics and an MBA. Um, and, and, and those kinds of people are needed in this uh, stage of affairs. So, Paul, please take it away. A new direction in quantum processing. Thank you. Uh, great to be here at IQT uh, again. In fact, IQT New York was my first in-person conference for several years, so very good to be here in San Diego. Um, Cold Quanta is a quantum platform company. We're perhaps best known for innovating and developing products for trapping, cooling, and manipulating atoms. The glass cell you see on the slide here is an example of that. And we sell these products to a wide array of companies in the quantum ecosystem, some of which are no doubt here today. We also use those products to develop our own portfolio of quantum platforms, from quantum computing that I'll talk about today to quantum dynamics, our unique Albert platform. We have some exciting programs in quantum sensors, from quantum inertial sensing to quantum RF sensing. We develop optical lattice clocks, which are the most precise instruments ever developed by humankind. And we have uh, a number of programs in quantum communications. More broadly, uh, looking forward, the vision of the company is to connect quantum sensors with quantum computers and quantum signal processing platforms via quantum communication networks to help solve some of the world's most pressing problems. Today, though, I am absolutely delighted to announce two pivotal milestones for Cold Quanta, the acquisition of the Chicago-based exceptional quantum software company, Supertech. The founder, co-founder, and CEO, Pranav Gokhale, is here. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, in addition, the commercial release in beta of Hilbert, the world's first gate-based cold atom quantum computer. So big day for us. Thank you. So uh, atoms are uh, a very promising approach to building quantum computers. They're neutral, so we pack them very closely together in a two-dimensional array. They're just a couple of microns uh, apart, and inherently that's a massively scalable approach. We then cool those atoms with lasers. So the actual system itself is operating at room temperature. There's no cryogenics required. Uh, and then we entangle the atoms through Rydberg excitation, and that has a very broad effect on the array, so inherently yields high connectivity. And that high connectivity, coupled with the rich atomic state of the atoms that we're using, provides a very promising path to error correction and future fault tolerance. Uh, and then last, but certainly by no means least, this approach is inherently miniaturizable. The cell that I showed you before would fit in the palm of my hand. The rest of the quantum computer is lasers, it's optics, it's electronics, all of which can be miniaturized down. And in fact, we have experience doing this at Cold Quanta. We've taken one of our quantum dynamic systems, we've miniaturized it down to the size of a dorm room refrigerator, we put it in a SpaceX rocket, uh, and it's now operating on the International Space Station. It's been there for several years, operating every single day. And so our goal over the next five years is to take quantum computing to the edge and deploy these large-scale devices in rack-mountable format. At Cold Quanta, we are proud to have achieved a number of important industry firsts in cold atom quantum computing. Just last month, uh, in conjunction with our academic partners at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and with Riverlane, we had a paper published in Nature where we demonstrated for the first time the execution of algorithms on a cold atom quantum computer. Uh, and again, we have another, part, another paper uh, with Madison that's available on the archive where we demonstrate the largest ever array of trapped atoms, over 1,200, 1,225 to be precise. And then again today, we are announcing in commercial beta Hilbert, the world's first 
gate-based cold atom quantum computer. So as we look forward, uh, our goal by roughly 2025 is to take that 1,000 atom array, in fact, even larger arrays than that that we're working on today, and operationalize those as a 1,000 qubit quantum computer. We have multiple programs internally on beam shaping, beam steering, all of the optics and photonics and atomics necessary to create these large-scale devices. And then the cell I showed you before could hold tens of thousands of qubits. So we believe we have a compelling path by the end of the decade to scale towards a million qubits. So I'll turn now to Supertech. We are so delighted with this combination because it cuts across so much of what we do as a company. It extends the set of products that we can offer to the ecosystem, to the industry. It expands the set of capabilities that we can deliver to our customers. And it accelerates the development pathway and time to value for our quantum information platform. So it really is uh, a broad set of strategic uh, objectives and benefits that Supertech represents for us going forward. So the problem that Supertech set out to solve, and I'm, I'm going to give no doubt a much uh, more simplistic view than Pranav would do if we were up here, uh, was really to bridge what we refer to as the quantum gap, which is the gap between the capabilities of current and near-term quantum computers in the tens to hundreds of qubit range, regardless of whether they're cold atoms, superconducting, trapped ion, the gap between those systems and the computational power that will be required to unlock the trillions of dollars of market value that we all talk about in revolutionizing industries like pharmaceuticals, material science, financial services. Uh, and they came at this through the lens of software. How do we utilize software to accelerate the capabilities, the efficiency, the computational power of current quantum computers? So the first product that Supertech developed, probably the product that they're best known for, is a comprehensive quantum software platform called Superstack. Uh, and Superstack bridges the gap from applications to the underlying quantum hardware and enables users to develop their applications and their quantum programming language of choice and then deploy to a range of underlying quantum hardware. And at the top of the stack, they have a rich program of research into algorithmics that accelerates the computational power and efficiency of applications, even for small number of qubits, and then lower down in the stack. Those applications are then optimally decomposed into pulse representations that are targeted to the native gate set and capabilities of the specific hardware platform. So this cross-layer compilation accelerates application efficiency and performance and speed, enabling customers to accelerate their time to value and obtain the maximum value from their quantum investments. For us as an industry uh, to cross the chasm uh, from early adopters to mainstream enterprise, uh, amongst other things, will require the emergence of real benchmarks. So if you think about early adopters, and there are probably many here at IQT, they have the, the teams and the capabilities to understand the specific performance of various hardware platforms, to be able to make intelligent determinations about what platform to use for what use case, that's not the case for mainstream enterprise. And what we have today in reality is principally metrics that are machine focused, that are circuit focused and aren't necessarily representative of how an application will perform in the real world. So Supertech has developed uh, this comprehensive benchmarking suite called Superstack that is really an application focused set of benchmarks uh, that looks at performance against a set of applications representative of real-world use cases in chemistry, in finance, and perhaps most importantly, actually, in error correction, to be able to say, how will these various platforms perform as we move towards the error-corrected era? And importantly, the benchmarking suite has been made available as open source, so the methodology is completely transparent. And at Cold Quanta, we're committed to continuing to fund and support and develop uh, these benchmarks because they're such an important part of what it will take for our industry to thrive and, and ultimately cross that chasm to mainstream enterprise uh, adoption. So in addition to the products I mentioned before, uh, Supertech's developed a number of compelling industry vertical applications in finance, in energy, 
and logistics. They all have open APIs to make it very easy for customers to engage and use. But actually, we see the value going beyond just quantum computing. So the screenshot in the bottom right there is from our quantum dynamics platform called Albert. This is an actual service on the cloud today that you can access for free. It allows users to uh, interact with and manipulate real quantum matter. And our goal is to build a rich set of applications on top of that platform. And we see the super tech team and the IP and the capabilities playing a very important role there as we build these additional quantum platforms going forward. Uh, the way we actually got introduced to SuperTech, we were looking at ways to incorporate software into the Hilbert stack to really squeeze every ounce of juice out of the, out of the stack, out of the application. Uh, and we were so impressed with what we saw uh, with SuperTech, with the team and the technology, we realized that strategically it made sense to bring the companies together. The core technology that they've developed that's so useful here, again, is this compilation from the application down to the pulse level, and we'll be integrating that very deeply into Hilbert to maximize the computational power, the performance, the efficiency to deliver value for our customers. Uh, and then lastly, as many of you may know, Cold Quanta is headquartered in Boulder, Colorado. We recently op opened uh, a large new facility uh, in Louisville, which is close to Boulder. That will be the flagship data center for future generations of our quantum platforms. We have an office uh, in Madison, closely aligned with the university, an office in Oxford in the UK, and we're now delighted to be planting our flag in Chicago. The office in Chicago will be led by the two co-founders of SuperTech, Pranav Gokhale and Fred Chong, and Fred is also a professor of computer science at the University of Chicago, a renowned quantum information theorist, and this really deepens and extends our existing relationships with the Chicago quantum ecosystem, with the university, with duality, with the Chicago quantum exchange. So we're just delighted now to have this presence in the Chicago region. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about what we're doing at Cold Quanta, uh, please do feel free to get in touch, come to the website to learn more. We're actively hiring as well across the entire business. So if this is interesting and you want to join us on this journey, I do encourage you to get in touch. So thank you very much for your time, and maybe we have time for a, a couple of questions here. Thank you so much, Paul. And it's in, intriguing to see how, how you're moving forward, and again, that ecosystem coming together to make things real for people. And, uh, and you, you have any projections? When, when do you expect you know, your first real mark? Yeah. I'm back. Your first real uh, market value uh, that really starts driving the market, uh, when do you expect that to happen for Cold Well, so I, I think what sets Cold Quanta apart in many ways is we actually really are an ecosystem company. We're delivering products to the market today. Uh, we're delivering, as we like to say, we talk about quantum advantage in quantum computing. Actually, there's quantum advantage today in sensors and in clocks that are exponentially more sensitive, more powerful, more adaptable than their classical counterparts. So we're delivering that right now today uh, with products that we're offering and that you can come to our website and, and buy. Yeah, yeah, that shows the, the promise. I mean, it's a technology platform that pushes up. Computing and, and communication are just two areas of, uh, of application. Absolutely. The sensing is the closest one in a, yeah. in a way. Uh, questions from the audience? Just. Raise your hand and shout out. I'm just looking here. There's uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about. Um, uh, well, you already uh, said so, but the announcement of uh, Hilbert and SuperTech is in today's IQT news. Uh, could you also elaborate a little bit about you know the big problem that Jack just uh, uh, talked about? You know the talent, the struggle for talent. You know we're we're building this industry. There's so many. Uh, uh, let's say. Uh, hundreds of millions coming in, in different uh, areas of the world, and all of those need the talent to make it run. Are we in trouble with the talent uh, coming up and available today? So I'll, I'll give you a statistic that I think illustrates this in our industry. So in the US alone, the US creates 65,000 computer science grads every year. Um, the US creates 2,000 physics PhDs every year. 
And if you think of those physics PhDs, you've got astrophysicists, you've got all kinds, right, cosmologists. Uh, how many of those have skills that are relevant for quantum computing? Maybe 500. So we're talking two orders of magnitude different, which is not to say that computer scientists are not important in quantum. Of course they are, but in terms of the core product development. So there's that, that significant gap that we have. And I came out of the software industry. We always used to talk about the war for talent. This is a whole different level. Yeah. Um, what I will say is so important, and, and I think at Cold Quanta we've been championing very actively, is to reach out and engage with communities that are not typically uh, participating in this industry. So whether it be uh, women in STEM, uh, which is a significant area of focus for us, underserved communities, minority communities, there's a rich array of talent that we can and should be tapping into as an industry in order to sh ensure that we can continue to thrive and to grow. And I'll also say, um, you know, coming from Silicon Valley myself, we tend to think in a very kind of insular mindset. It's access to these additional markets, whether it be in Chicago, in Wisconsin, in the UK, and we'll announce others uh, in the very near future, both domestically and internationally, we have to be casting uh, a wider net. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at that from, uh, you know, mo uh, maybe uh, you can say a few words about that, you know, the whole geopolitical sense, because uh, there's more isolations, but, uh, isolation popping up between different areas of the world, and they all have their own growth of talent, which is one of the driving factors for what we're doing. Do you see any any issues here that we really need to be aware of? Well, I, I think you can look at this through two lenses, right? I, I think the kind of the geopolitical tensions, the significant investment that China is making in quantum is resulting in an increase in funding and an increase of activity uh, in the Western world. So certainly there's a, there's a benefit there, and that helps us to kind of uh, catalyze the development of the industry. I think also we, we need to think about, and we'll be talking later on today, about the importance of partnerships in this industry. Because one of the great things that the US does for the world and, and the Western world does for the world is this concept of entrepreneurship and, and this concept of startups and this concept of the ecosystem that surrounds the development of those companies. And it's through that ecosystem and the partnerships within the ecosystem that I think we really drive the innovations that are necessary to retain competitiveness on the international stage. Yeah, yeah. I, d I couldn't agree more. It is, uh, I think, a, a real challenge for you know the uh, the coalition of, of Western countries to also have that uh, have control over those progressions and and make sure we end up where we want to be together. So, okay, thank you very much, Paul, thank and uh, uh, thanks for supporting uh, IQT this way. Right. And uh, thanks look forward to, to speaking to you later. Thank you.